Hello crafters, welcome to Creators at Home with G and my first video in my Halloween in August series. Um, join myself and Angie every Thursday in the month of August and we'll, we will be creating Halloween themed crafts. Cards, tags, bookmarks, home decor, you name it. Um, I'm going to be making a kind of a vintage looking pumpkin. Now my inspiration come, came from Pinterest. I'll insert the video here and I'll link. So I'll insert a link to the original pin in the comments of this video. Um, I'm using one of these cocktail fish bowls from Poundland. I'm going to be using this soccer training set from Poundland. You get four of the cones and you get a, a small football. Now, thankfully, this plastic isn't too thick. So what I've done on, on one already, I have cut round. So I've got rid of this piece. As you can see, it's really flimsy. So I've cut round that piece already. We are going to be doing some paper mache. We're going to be doing some painting. This is going to be, um, it could be quite a long video, but I think it's going to be worth it. I will obviously speed through all the, the long bits and the bits you don't need to see. But the first thing I need to do is I need to glue my, in essence, witch's hat on the top of what's going to be my pumpkin, my jack-o'-lantern. So I'm going to put a bead of glue all the way around the edge of this football soccer cone and place it on the top of this fish bowl and using a cuticle tip I'm going to smooth off the excess glue. I'm not too bothered about this being tidy because um, this is all going to be covered in um, decoupage. No, decoupage, Gareth. In, um, oh gosh, I just said it. Paper mache. Okay, so I'm going to let that set and then we'll move down to my kitchen. Okay crafters, I'm down in the kitchen and I have the the two pieces glued together. I added some more glue around the outside, but obviously that's all going to be covered by the um, not my podge, the paper mache. So I'm going to use one cup of plain flour to one cup of warm water. I don't know if that's going to be too much, but we'll soon find out. If I could hold on to this bag, this bag is very full and I don't want to put too much in. Okay, and then one cup of warm water and I have a newspaper. I'll tell you, I um, I sent Paul up to get some newspapers because we didn't have any in the house. And we needed some because we've got to do the uh, the doors during August. And um, I was completely utterly shocked by the cost of the paper. I did not realise that papers cost over a pound nowadays. I mean, it's been years since I bought one, and I think the only time I ever bought one is because I was sent down the road to get one. But I was absolutely shocked that they cost so much. Okay, so it's one cup of plain flour and one cup of water and I'm just going to use my my fingers because I think it's gonna it's gonna get all mucky anyway because this is paper mache so just makes a I just mix it together and try and get rid of the lumps Ugh, this is disgusting I will have to dry my hands off because I need to start tearing up the paper I brought some spare batteries down because I think this is this is going to take quite a while to to do. I'm recording this on a Sunday so you can hear our church bells in the background. Okay. Okay, let's wash my hands. And I'm just simply going to take out some paper and I'm going to 
tear it into strips and tear those strips as well. Make sure that I'm still in frame. Just want to make sure that you see this. Okay, how's that? Okay, that looks about. That looks okay. And I'm going to cover both the um, the hat and the. Um, Body of the jack o' lantern so they become seamless. I will give the inside a bit of a wipe out because obviously my hands are covered in gook. So I will give the inside where I'm touching, I will wash, wash that out, give that a wipe out once I'm finished. But th this is going to take quite a number of layers because I want to build up and I want to, I want to have some of the indentations from a pumpkin. So this is going to take quite a lot of layers. I will um, bring as much of it to camera as I can, but obviously I don't want to avoid tears, so I will speed up. I imagine this project is going to run over a few days, because obviously I need things to dry and so forth. But that's the beauty about this type of um, creation. Some crafts just aren't meant to be done within a few minutes. And to just keep building this up. I definitely want some of the uh, the grooves that you get in a pumpkin. I don't want it just to be around. So you know, I just don't want it to be like a like a football. I want it to have dimension and shape. about this part here because eventually I'm going to do some um, some treatment around here with probably tool I'm thinking of using some black orange and purple tool um, to give it some like a frilly a frilly neck so to speak so that will cover that up looking for smooth I'm not bothered if it's got um, creases in it I'm going to attempt to um, to almost do sausages roll the paper up 
just so I can help me get the the ridges that I want. Because I want to build them out slightly. Now I'm covering those sausages, if you like. So then they're trapped underneath the uh, paper. If I just left them free, they'd be a uh, they could get damaged and fall off. Right this way, I'm covering them, but I still get that aesthetic. If you can see, just there. I'm going to finish putting this last few bits of paper on and then I'm going to leave it for 20 at 4 hours to dry and then we will come back and that will be day 2 of this um, this project I will let you know how many days or which day we're on as we're going through it but like I say some projects do deserve to be a bit longer one thing I am hating though is this gook all over my hands. If, if you've been following me for any length of time you know that I'm not a big fan of glue on my fingers but this is just one of those projects where it's, much, it's better to use your hands. So okay sirrah sirrah. Okay crafters I will see you back in a second. I allowed this to dry fully so this is day number two um, so that's all nice and dry now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wad up some paper and I'm going to fill in the gaps in between these ridges just to bring them up just to give it that pumpkin shape let's move this out of the way let's get some paper you can see how bulbous that is so I'm going to do the same here but obviously with the indentations I will build it up so it goes beyond the indentation so the so the ridges that we put in will help give it that kind of feel oops that kind of feel so let's crack on
Okay, crafters, we are now at the stage where we can sand this down because obviously with it being um, flower, you are going to get some rough bits. I don't know if you can hear that. I really annoyed about the fact that my camera didn't record all this building that we did to give it that pumpkin shape. I'm hoping you can see the definition and the dips. Okay crafters, I don't have orange acrylic paint so I'm going to make my own but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate on the witch's hat and I'm going to paint this first with white gesso and then we're going to paint it the colour I want it. So I'm going to use a one inch foam brush and my Hebio white gesso. I'm probably butchering the name but you know what I mean. I really need to get some more, I don't have much left at all. So I'm going to cover this witch hat, which is what it is in essence. I think I want to do like a black and um, purple stripe on it or a black or a purple hat with black spots, I haven't decided yet. And I just want to cover this newspaper. Okay. Right now let's try and make up some sort of orange colour. I'm going to use yellow and red, which obviously, as you know, makes orange. And I just need to get the right shade. Got a plastic bowl here. This is crimson red. And this is yellow. This is, I think this is from um, the works. It's a lot, it's a lot runnier. Okay, now I need something to stir it to mix it. Still too red for me, so I need to add a bit more yellow. use the same brush can I give this a coat of this orange now I think I should have given this a coat of the gesso see how it shines through crafters so I'm going to wipe that off and I'm going to give the base a cover of the uh, white gesso also I think just to cover this um, newspaper because this, um, this orange colour is quite opaque. Or is it translucent? One of them. could also do crafters if you don't want to use the gesso you could possibly cover it with white tissue paper 
That way, the white tissue paper will act as a barrier between the paper, newspaper, and the paint. But I'm okay doing this, just to give you another option. I love all the texture that the paper gives. The good thing about doing this in August rather than October is that you have the summer heat to help with the drying this paint very quickly. Okay, crafters, while this is drying, we're going to paint the, um, the purple. Now, this is a metallic purple from Poundland. I need to go and clean my brush. Like I was saying, this is a metallic purple paint, acrylic paint from Poundland. Um, it's quite thin. It's not, as, it's not as thick as I would like it to be, but I'm trying to trying to do this craft using Poundland items as much as possible because then if you don't have a Poundland and you're watching this overseas from overseas you can try your dollar stores I'd imagine a lot of the a lot of the items I'm using are available or similar items are available in your stores Poundland's paint being so watery, they must have uh, reduced the quality. Oh, so the let so the let's craft is from Poundland. So even that yellow I was using that wasn't from the works. That's from Poundland also. It must be their own range. It's going to take a few coats too, with it being so thin. Okay, Crawford, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to crack on and I'm going to give the hat and the body multiple coats and then we will come back. Okay crafters, I've given this about three coats of both the purple and the orange and I'm liking the way it's turning out. I like the fact that the uh, some of the paper is coming through, some of the white dress is coming through, so help, I think that helps give the pumpkin some dimension. I'm now going to put some shading in, I'm hoping this is going to work. I'm going to add some more red to this uh, orange paint, just to give um, hopefully a dark orange which will help with the definition and I have a fan brush so I'm going to dip my fan brush into it and I'm going to follow my striations down the ones that we put in using the um, paper mache, the layers that we did, which unfortunately you didn't see, which still aggravates me, even on day three. So I'm just putting in some striations and then blending them through because I don't want them to be in your face, so to speak. I want them to be hinted at. Okay. 
Right, I'm gonna quickly zap that with my heat tool. Okay, I'm also going to add some green to this. Just to, uh, again, with the highlights, and to give it a, uh, a different look. I don't want it to be universal. That is too much. Okay, so let's try again with this uh, green. I don't want it to be again in your face. Just, just, just the highlights. I'm just using some tissue to wipe it off. That is just too much there. some black paint and all these acrylic paints I've brought from Poundland over the years this is a Poundland one this is from the works I believe this is Poundland and this is Poundland and even these paintbrushes are from Poundland so what I want to do is I want to create a spiral going around the uh, the hat. If you look at the um, inspiration piece from um, Pinterest, which I will picture, I will insert a picture here. That has a pom pom at the at the top, and I haven't decided if I'm going to be adding a pom pom yet. I have, I just, I haven't made up my mind. If I do add one, you'll see in the pictures. Just that I haven't decided. I'm not sure if the pom pom makes it look too whimsy, but then that's kind of what I'm going for. So I may add one. Not sure. So let me just dry that with my heat tool. Okay, crafters, now I need to decide which I want facing the front and which side I want facing the back. I quite like this being the front. So I need to paint on some Okay, so like the um like the inspiration piece. Where do I want the face to be? I like that. Okay, on the inspiration piece, they've got the hat, the, the the face, and the eyes, and all that painted on. And I'm going to do the same. So I'm going to just create um, some sort of eyebrows and the eyes, and I'm just going to paint those on using the, um, the acrylic paint. And again, there is no right and wrong. You could you could also have put something on the underside of the uh, paper mache. Okay. Another 
paintbrush. I'm really not looking for perfection. I want this to have kind of a, a vintage kind of old worldy look. I want it to have that handmade look. Probably going to have to give the uh, the white more than one coat, which is absolutely fine. So I'm just going to go back and forth with the uh, the black and the white paint. And I will just, I won't speed it up too much, but I'll just speed through this. As long winded as this craft has been crafters, I have absolutely enjoyed it apart from the annoyance of my camera not recording a big part of it I'm hoping you get the uh, the gist to the point where you, if you choose to you can recreate this because I, I, I honestly believe that this is really really does have the uh, the vintage the vintage kind of feel and look to it I'm really happy with that Okay, crafters, I think I'm happy with that. So now it comes to the most important part, and that's decorating. I've got this tinsel on eBay, because obviously the, when I record this video, the stuff isn't in the stores. Um, so we're going to put some of this silver tinsel around um, the rim of the witch's hat. Now I should have started in the back, but as you can see there, I didn't. But I don't think it's going to make much difference. I think this is quite thick tinsel, so you, you're not going to see the join. this glittery 
black and purple spider, which I think I may add to the top, the front like, like that, yeah. add it to the front just there. Okay, and then it comes to the ruffles around the bottom. I'm going to be using green, black, and orange tool. And I think I'm going to go green, black, and then orange. And I'm just going to put the tool on top of each other. And I'm going to drop them to the floor. And then I'm going to cut a length crafters my, my camera just cut off again so I'm not sure um, what has been missed I really hope that nothing has been missed I've done the face I've um, glued on some tinsel glued on a decorative spider from Poundland and now I'm going to I just cut three lengths of tool in black green and orange so I'm going to do the green then the black I'm just going to put them on top of each other so the green the black and then the orange and we're going to create the ruffle around the bottom around the neck of the, uh, the jack-o-lantern this is where you're going to need some sort of spatula some sort of silicone tool because we're going to create a ruffle from the back in this crevice here. And I'm going to be going back and forth with it to give it the pleat. just need to neaten that edge I have some orange rick rack here so I think that might be quite fitting again starting from the back let's put some hot glue down and submerge our rick rack in I will of course go around this with a heat tool afterwards just to make sure it's all neat and tidy. But you know what crafters, I think it needs a wider ribbon. Okay, I have this purple. And I think I'm going to put the um, the orange rip rack on top of that. I don't want to put orange ribbon then orange rip rack, you won't see it. Okay, crafters, I'm going to call that done. I'm really happy with it. It was a three day process, but I think the overall result is definitely reminiscent of the pin that I saw on Pinterest. So I will link the original pin below 
and like I said most of these items that I've used today in this video are from Poundland the tool I got off eBay um, you can get that quite cheap online nowadays so really happy with it and um, I think it definitely has that vintage vibe to it thank you very much for joining me with this long journey and you'll see me very soon with another uh, Halloween in August video I nearly said Christmas in July Halloween in August. Thank you very much and I'll see you soon. Take care now. Bye-bye.